India is building a $2.1 billion airport at Navi, Mumbai, set to transform the aviation landscape of the country. At its maximum capacity, it can handle up to 90 million passengers annually and transport 2.5 million tons of cargo. This airport will complement the existing Chaturati Shivaji Maharaj International Airport in Mumbai. It's no secret that the demand for the Indian aviation sector has boomed after COVID. This has put a significant strain on Mumbai's only airport, which is facing flight delays of up to two hours. It registered a 37% increase in passenger numbers, complicating the smooth inflow and outflow of passengers. The condition was so bad that the Ministry of Civil Aviation canceled 200 flights per week to and from Mumbai from February 15th onwards. The congestion is due to several reasons, but mostly due to poor adherence to individual slots. A detailed analysis showed that aircraft arriving before time disrupts the whole schedule for the flights that arrive on time. During the end of last year, about 34.4% of the aircraft landed before their scheduled arrival time. The lack of parallel taxiways at the Mumbai International Airport is also a major bottleneck. All aircraft from different terminals converge on a single taxiway, slowing down the process of sending aircraft for takeoff. A new parallel taxiway is under construction that will take an additional 18 months to complete. The outdated nature of the air traffic radar system further plagues the aircraft with technical glitches and delays. The hardware for the current system is more than 18 years old, exceeding its estimated lifespan of 10 years. Hopefully, with further automation in the future, the situation can be much better for the airport. But for now, a more permanent solution is to create a second, more advanced airport 22 miles southeast of the first one. Navi Mumbai International Airport, in addition to enhancing regional connectivity, will feature multiple transportation links. Among these, the Mumbai Trans Harbor Link, a 13-mile long sea bridge, is currently under construction, and that'll connect to airport to Mumbai's mainland. Officially, the project is known as DB Patil International Airport, named after Dinkar Patil, a former member of parliament and political leader. The airport is being developed by the Adani Group and is split into five phases. Its first phase will handle 25 million passengers per year. Once all five phases are completed, the airport will have four terminals and two runways. According to the latest update by the Union Civil Aviation Ministry, Siandia, 55 to 60 percent of the project is complete. The airport's Terminal 1 and the ATC Tower are being designed by London-based Zaha Hadid Architects. The building will be shaped like a lotus, which is also the national flower of India and the party symbol of the prevailing BJP party. The particular wave design of the facade is very similar to the Haydar Aliyev Center designed by Zaha Hadid in 2014. The late Iraqi-born British designer is known for her flowy designs that accommodate curves, spirals, and other geometric shapes. Facilities at the airport will include cargo terminal buildings, two runways for independent operations, taxiways, an apron area, and an aircraft maintenance site. Navi Mumbai Airport will also have long-term aircraft parking and additional infrastructure facilities such as car parking, a power supply system, and a water treatment plant. The three interconnected terminal buildings will offer amenities like food courts, lounges, travelators, and other passenger facilities. The airport will have a terminal area of 2,700,000 square feet and a cargo area of 1.1 million square feet. The terminal area will have a provision for an online check-in and an integrated baggage handling system. A low-cost carrier terminal with a capacity of 2 million passengers a year will be built in the first phase. Needless to say, this airport is huge in magnitude, and with projects come even bigger hurdles. To clear the site for the airport, more than 5,000 families were relocated across 10 villages and 3,000 buildings were raised to the ground. Most of the residents affected by the project are fishermen, farmers, or odd job workers. As compensation, the villagers were given developed land at the new township of Pushpak Nagar in Uwe. Landowners were paid 1,500 INR or $19 per square feet of land, rent for 18 months, and a developed plot of land. On the exact location of the planned runway was a small hill called Uwe Hill. This major obstacle had to be removed at all costs if the project was to move forward. It was decided to use controlled blasting as a method of demolition rather than manually removing the rock. 
More than 5,000 blasts, including almost 50 challenging cliff blasts, were conducted at different locations on the hill to reduce its side to manageable chunks. Uwe Hill is the largest on this site. Its height is being reduced from 300 feet to 32 feet. Vast volumes of loose earth and stones were compacted down to make the land stable enough to withstand airport operations. However, this controlled blasting caused much damage and injuries to both villagers and workers. Residents complained about tremors affecting their houses and civilian injuries. As this operation took place, as little as 100 meters away from people's homes, chunks of rocks were sent flying through the air at distances of up to 200 feet. Vibrations from the blasting had caused cracks in the walls of houses, making some people afraid that their houses might collapse. On 6 January 2018, five engineers working on the site were injured by supposedly controlled blasting work that was underway. The explosions had also triggered a landslide and workers were hit by falling rocks. Difficult terrain brings serious construction difficulties. The land for the proposed site is swampy and flood prone and large areas are frequently waterlogged, especially during the monsoon season. Another major hurdle is the 40 meter wide Owe River cutting across the site. The diversion has been done to avoid flooding the nearby villages in the airport site. The Central Water Power Research Station was appointed to study and present a plan to divert the Owe River from out of the core airport area. Workers dug a new path near Ovale Village with an increased width of 200 meters and a depth of 3 meters. This enhanced river capacity will be more efficient in dealing with heavy rains and flooding. The project was first conceived in November 1997. The Ministry of Civil Aviation constituted a committee to examine various sites for an extension of the first Mumbai airport. In 2000, a site at Mandwa Rewas was selected but because it could only bear a single runway. Hence, this option was dropped. The findings of the report were revised and Navi Mumbai was found to be more suitable for the construction of a new airport. With a special emphasis on sustainability, the first phase of the project aims to be 100% green. All vehicles that will be used at the station will be electric. All charging stations will be installed across the airport. It will also extensively use green electricity, a large part of which shall be solar power generated on the site. The aim is to make Navi Mumbai Airport one of the most energy efficient airports in the world. To accommodate the millions of visitors each year, more than 5,000 parking spaces will be made available to passengers. 42 aircraft can be parked simultaneously in the airport region. Prime Minister Narendra Modi unveiled this foundation plaque at the groundbreaking ceremony for the airport in Mumbai on 18 February 2018. The Adani Group, one of India's largest airport operators, took over the management of the airport project in 2021 and started the construction in August that year. Even though the construction faced many delays, mostly due to COVID and opposition from displaced people and environmental groups, the progress is back on track. The first phase of Navi Mumbai International Airport is set to take off in March 2025. To ensure regional connectivity, the airport will be linked to major roads like NH4B and Sion Pineville Highway. Furthermore, the new airport will also have railway connectivity to the Tagia Railway Station to ease traveler mobility. The project is expected to generate 142,000 direct and 200,000 indirect job opportunities. It will also boost the economy in the region with industrial development planned across the Mumbai Pune Amanikar and the Mumbai Nashi corridors. Navi International Airport will handle international and domestic travelers with 78 contact airport positions, 29 remote aircraft positions, and more than 350 check-in counters. A three-level office complex will be located at the center of the terminal building. With all the premium facilities for its travelers, Navi Mumbai Airport will be a perfect candidate to become an international transit hub on par with some of the world's busiest aerodromes like Dubai, London, Frankfurt, and Singapore. That's also because India is in a very advantageous position geographically. Most, if not all, countries can be reached within 12 hours of the flight. It's no secret that foreign investors and corporations are heavily invested in India. To get access to Indian business, a strong aviation link is needed. That's why India is planning to complete 72 airports by the end of 2025. You can see their determination from the fact that the government has already invested $12 billion in it. The Navi Mumbai airport would be one of the major phases of this investment.
That's it for today. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you do, smash the like button and subscribe to show your support. Are there any other projects we ought to be covering on this channel? Mention them below in the comments, and we'll see you in the next video.